Hello, Rob. Can you hear Hello. me? Hello. Yes. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Um, so we'll get started with the next talk. Uh, I'd uh, like to introduce Assam uh, Shar Al Jawarna. Apologies if I pronounced that correctly. Um, received a PhD in uh, computer science and engineering from University of Bologna, Italy in 2020. Uh, is now a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Bologna. Um, his research interests cover many aspects of big data management and data science for highly dynamic applications in smart cities and urban infor uh, informatics. He's also an expert in uh, Azure Cloud and edge computing. So thank you and uh, take it away. I'll add your slides to the screen. Great. Uh, yes, thank you, Rob. Hello, everybody. I'm Islam al Jawarna, a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Bologna. Department of Computer Science in Italy. Thanks a lot for attending my presentation. And um, thanks a lot to Microsoft for inviting me to this online edition of free and open source software for Geospatial special conference. It's an honor for me to speak here today. So I'm today presenting um, a cloud-based Geospatial special open systems for mitigating climate change, research directions, challenges, and future perspectives. At the end of the presentation, and this is really very important, I will provide you with a link to my open source code that you can easily deploy on Microsoft Azure. Okay, so this is a short outline of my uh, presentation today. I will start basically by an overview, a motivating scenario, explaining why the joint analysis and the processing of geo-referenced mobility, climate, and meteorological data together is pivotal in today's smart city scenarios. Thereafter, I will explain some of the challenges that are hindering the application of this joint analysis using the current open source cloud-based systems for such a multi-domain uh, scenario. After a while, I will show a novel architecture that we are working in uh, on, sorry, uh, here at University of Bologna and deployed the uh, deployed it on Microsoft Azure by tweaking some of the open source uh, geospatial systems that are available currently. Then I will conclude the talk with an example, future proposed architecture that features edge computing, specifically on Azure actually, in addition to cloud computing. So, <clears throat> imagine being a dairy city dweller walking at different areas of a metropolitan city that is heavily trafficked by several kinds of vehicles that simply brings more pollution to the air. Pollutions like, you know, particulate matters, uh, CO2, images from those cars because of those images, uh, uh, including the dangerous, as I said, particulate matters BM10 and BM2.5, which could easily wreak havoc on the health of any human being. So the city management and planning departments want solutions that allows them to study the relationship between vehicle mobility in a city, you know, in the metropolitan city, uh, and climate and meteorological data. Um, actually, there are many ways for collecting climate and meteor meteor meteorological data, including on-site sensors or inside sensors and moving sensors. Uh, this data normally is georeferenced, containing the coordinates of locations where um, uh, those data has been collected, you know, the locations they are representing. For example, um, a value of PM10 in a specific location. At the same time, massive amounts of human and vehicle mobility data are arriving in fast streams to special, uh, to, to special stream processing systems as I will come to explain later in the next slides. So the task would be, um, uh, is to be able to join mobility, climatology, and meteorological data to exploit a shared view that may help in better urban planning that aims to mitigate climate change. And an aim, the final aim is to protect the population health on the long run protect them from uh, images like particulate matters, you know. Uh, uh, so we want to do some interactive visualization like heat maps, 
showing areas that are most polluted in real time with the statistics on mobility. So, so it's a joint analysis between climate data and meteorological data and mobility data. Also, we want to be able to build mobile applications that help daily lightweight dwellers who are using their bikes, you know, motorcycles, or just simply walking. Uh, we, we want to help them to avoid in avoiding street paths or street paths with heavy pollutions. So uh, at least in this scenario, we have some special queries that we need to, um, to perform. Mostly we, we do proximity, uh, special proximity, special joins, special clustering, special statistics, or what is so-called geostatistics, uh, KNN, you know. Uh, the, the ultimate goal is achieving a pre-specified list of quality of service goals. So we want a system that is able to achieve low latency at the same time, high throughput. Okay. So, sorry, I'm moving to the next slide. Um, so this is simply an overview of we want, what we want it to be in order to bring the joint meteorological and mobility and also climate data analytics into reality. We want simply to join, as you can see in the figure, georeferenced meteorological and climate data with mobility data, vehicle mobility data and human mobility data, okay? Uh, using geometric coordinates. So we want to use the coordinates from both data sets to join the data into a unified view. Imagine then being able to answer advanced query, complex queries, special queries, such as selecting, for example, the top five neighborhoods where the particulate matter is greater than a specific value, and also the mobility statistics, like the count of, mobi of vehicle mobility in those areas is greater than a specific value. Without joining the meteorological and mobility data, this kind of queries is impossible. Uh, a little background, actually, we need here. Uh, as we said, we need, we need some uh, to execute or to perform some of these Jewish special uh, queries, such as proximity query and containment query. Uh, proximity query is a query that is asking um, uh, asking for a set of data that far away from a point of interest with a specific range. This one actually can be solved with a test or a predicate in geospatial analytics that is known as point and polygon. I will show how contain, uh, how proximity actually can be solved uh, with point and polygon. But specifically the containment or inclusion query need a point and polygon to be solved. And in containment or inclusion queries actually ask for all points that are contained within the premises of a polygonal, a polygonal shape you know, geometrical shape, regularly or arbitrarily shaped. Okay, so uh, normally they use the raw casting algorithm for solving this kind of queries, the BIB, which is uh, required for containment queries. But, um, but raw casting is expensive, why? Because for every point that you want to check, you have to pass horizontally a row and to check how many times the row crosses the polygon. If it's even, then it's outside. If it's odd, then it's inside. It's inside. Imagine doing this for a very big mobility data or meteorological data. This is very expensive. Sorry, just a second. So, um, as I said, uh, for sure, containment or occlusion queries can only be solved by BIB or point in polygon, but also proximity queries can be solved apart from, from being able to solve them using the distance calculations, geometrical distance calculations, like using Haver sign formula, if you are aware of Haver sign formula. It's just a simple formula for calculating the distance in geometries, you know. But apart from that, we can also solve the proximity, quer uh, proximity queries using BIB. 
And this is a, sil a simple algorithm actually for solving the proximity queries using BIB. You can see that even, um, um, even this problem can be transformed into uh, a containment alike query. First, with the range specified, we overlay a circle or circles if we have loops or holes, as you can see here. We then overlay minimum bounding rectangles that includes the circle. Thereafter, we apply BIB predicate to find which points really fall within those minimum bounding rectangles. For sure, we will have false positives because you see the, um, the rectangle is not a circle, so it's just enclosing the circle. So to, um, to actually discard those false positives, we apply the formula, like have a sign formula, which is expensive. Um, but at least here, we have performed a filter be 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 before we apply the uh, Haver sign formula. So we we have like, um, we were able to lower the latency and to reduce the latency. Okay, so what we need here is a robust and strong cloud-based geospatial system that is able to run in parallel and deployments uh, using a cloud, such as Microsoft Azure HD Insight, actually. So, uh, just a second, so, okay. This is a partial landscape of some of the current cloud-based promising open source geospatial processing systems. From here, actually, I will be selecting Sedona, which is previously known as, um, as GeoSpark, and also I will choose GeoMisa. GeoMisa actually is a very interesting um, framework uh, as an open source cloud-based geospatial system because it is featuring filter and refinement. I will explain what is filter and refinement here for special join because special join is very essential operation in geospatial analytics in the cloud. Um, so the desired features we need for our scenario is at least a system that is featuring filter and refinement. Why? Because it's cheaper than other um, uh, special join methods, because our task is joining to data sets that are geo-referenced. Then also we need a SQL-alike support. And as you can see, GeoMisa has a SQL-alike support. Also, there is an interesting, another interesting uh, open source platform, which is Spark Magellan. It's a small library, actually. I have been using it for years. And also we need a system that is supporting approximate spatial query processing in the cloud. Uh, spatial approximate query processing is like spatial sampling. I will come to that uh, in the next slides. Okay, so, but what are some of the challenges that we, we have in, uh, in the, um, in the scenario that we have described here, which is the joint processing if, uh, of climatology and mobility data. Actually, most importantly is how the, uh, we, trans we transfer the geospatial data, any georeference data, because I'm here referring actually to vector geospatial data, because they are parameterized into pairs of longitudes and latitudes before being able to, fr to freely move throughout the network. And why we do this actually? We do this simply to reduce the transfer time and, uh, and the upload time, you know, to the cloud. But this does not come for free actually because real geometries in this way are lost and it will be very hard and expensive to construct those into the real geometries. Why? Because we will be needing actually the point on uh, and polygon test. Uh, okay. So, imagine uh, you have points like this. So this is the geospatial data that is moving around in the network. It means nothing, actually. We have longitudes and latitudes, you know. And we have the embedding area here, you know. But the task is we want to check to which polygon each point here in this parameterized set, in this parameterized matrix, longitude, latitude, to which polygon uh, they belong. And this is normally known as overlying maps. You know, you put a map over another map. 
uh, or a matrix or an array over a map, you know, the embedding area. But doing that is not straightforward as shown in, uh, here in pictures, you know. It requires a special join. A special join is specifically very expensive because it incorporates, as we said before, the BIB, uh, the um, um, point in polygon predicate, which is an expensive, actually, um, geometric operation. So what some of the open source, successfully, some of the open source cloud-based geospatial systems opt for is adopting the filter and refine approach for spatial processing. And it simply works as shown here in the figure, such as the following. First, computing the MBR for every point from the data points, then computing the MBR for, for the embedding areas, uh, the, the Italia map that you have seen before, then performing an eco join, which is cheap actually, to find which points fall within the embedding area. And this is called the filtering stage. But after the filtering stage, actually, you will have false positives because, because here you are comparing, uh, you are performing basically what is called as MBR join. So you are joining on the minimum bounding rectangles. You will have false positives. So then you will use the expensive ray casting algorithm to, exclu to, exclu to exclude those false positives. And this is the refinement stage. I will not go into more details of this algorithm, actually. You can find in the literature that I will be providing at the end of the presentation, uh, very interesting uh, information about the filter and refine. What we have done at University of Bologna, many architectures for, uh, for enabling such kind of uh, scenario, the joint processing of meteorological climate and geospatial mobility data. OK. Um, So, sorry. This is. So, since few open source systems apply the filter and refinement approach, like GeoMesa and Sparks Magellan, etc., it is then possible with a simple code tweak to adapt actually those systems so that we can join georeference mobility and climate and meteorological data. As it's shown here in the figure, and this is a proposed architecture that we have proposed at the University of Bologna, we simply generate uh, minimum bounding rectangles for each data set uh, independently, the geometrical, um, uh, sorry, the um, mobility data and meteorological data, and also the climate, uh, the climate change data. Uh, then you generate for each data set the minimum bounding rectangles, and then you can directly apply the fin any, any open source system that is uh, adopting the filter and refinement approach, such as GeoMisa or Sparks Magellan or even Sedona. Uh, the result would be here a unified view of mobility and meteorological data. But without having a system that is providing a very fast join operation on geometrical da georeference data, it would be very expensive. OK, but actually, this is alone is not enough. What if mobility data is arriving very fast and characterized by being temporarily fluctuating in coolness and in arrival rate? Then approximate processing is very important and is a must. And it's based on the fact that tiny losses in accuracy do not affect the correctness of decision making. That said, approximate results with rigorous error bounds are acceptable for decision making in scenarios like our scenario here, the joint processing of meteorological and mobility data. Imagine generating, for example, heat maps where the color codes really are not the things that m matters most. Um, 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 not the, the color, uh, sorry, uh, the color codes are the things that matter most, not the exact distribution of data. So you don't want to know the exact distribution. You, you just want to generate heat maps with different color codes, you know? Okay. Um, so we have built a very interesting framework for special approximate core processing by simply tweaking some of the open source systems, specifically Apache, uh, Sp uh, Sparks Magellan, actually, which is a library on top of uh, Spark, you know. Um, 
and we have actually applied it to Apache, uh, Apache Spark structured streaming for performing quality of service over special sampling specifically. And we have tested it and deployed it on Microsoft Azure. In uh, the literature review that I will be providing at the end of this presentation, um, you can find more information about uh, this interesting framework. So, in conclusion, open source geospatial cloud-based systems are still in their early stages and need to be significantly improved, in my opinion, in several directions, including the approximate query, uh, query processing, geospatial approximate query processing, in order to unleash their full spectrum capacity for joint analytics, or joint, sorry, analytics of mobility, climate, and meteorological data. Why I'm saying this? Because even the uh, while we're using the filter and refinement approach, uh, you still have to tweak those systems to be able to apply it to to apply them to such scenarios. Okay, so as a future research perspective, we believe that offloading and porting part of the work, for example, the sampling for approximate query processing, near the data by by near the data, I mean to edge devices can boost significantly the performance of cloud deployments for integrated processing of georeference mobility and meteorological data. And here is um, a very interesting, actually, framework I'm proposing. Look at this example. For example, uh, we have two samplers, um, and this is deployed in Microsoft Azure, actually. Two samplers hosted in containers deployed on Azure I2, I2 Edge, IoT Edge, sorry, mobility sampler and meteorological sampler. Each sampling portion of the data, sending it to Kafka, Kafka brokers, you know, uh, deployed in HD inside the cluster in Azure, which then utilize, uh, utilizes um, an IT, IoT Kafka hub connector to feed the data from the Kafka to an Azure IT, IoT hub. The data is then will be um, is then available for consumption by a Spark streaming cluster deployed on an Azure HD Insight cluster. So, by porting the sampling part to Azure Edge, we reduce the data upload and reduce the processing required by the cloud. Okay, so in this link, you can find actually my code which is an open source code for cloud-based special approximate query processing with instructions, very clear instructions to deploy in Microsoft Azure. Um, actually, it's um, deployed on an, a Kafka HD Insight cluster with the Spark HD Insight cluster, communicating directly actually in a virtual network where data streams arriving through a gateway will be actually forwarded to the network. Um, finally, I would like to say that we are open for collaboration. Our group, Mobile Modelware Research Group at University of Bologna, is open for collaboration, as research collaboration on any of the areas that I have presented today. So please feel free to contact me, Isam al -Jawarne. Also, you can contact Prof. Luca Foschini uh, from our group. Um, I advise you actually, if you are interested in some of those topics in the, um, uh, here in the presentation, I advise you to have a look at, the, uh, at this list of the relevant uh, state of art, you know, for more information about those topics that I have been discussing today. Thanks a lot, uh, actually, thanks a lot to Microsoft for awarding me the AI for Earth Microsoft Azure Computer Grant on the form of credits for consumption for resource uh, Azure resource consumption. For more, my project titled Supporting Highly Efficient Machine Learning Applications for Reducing the Impact of Climate Change on Human Health and Metropolitan Cities. Uh, thanks a lot for attending my uh, talk. And uh, that's it. It's a question time if you have questions. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, you know, the I was talking earlier about sort of shoring up the foundations of how we can 
access data and combine uh, different data types. And um, you know, the fact that these sort of distributed spatial queries and joins are still you know, being worked out, I mean, speaks to the amount of work that we need to, to do to be able to you know, combine this type of you know, mobile data and, and climate data um, yeah. and how important that is. So thank you so much for, uh, for presenting. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat. Um, so yeah, we'll end the session there. And I uh, just want to say uh, thanks again to all our speakers and we'll uh, catch you again in the afternoon session. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rob. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.